we're, so we're talking here about whether these kinds of goods lead to efficiency, right? Um, and we've talked about efficiency being violated in a couple of different ways. You know, we talked about whether the market is competitive or not, and that's all about the structure of the market. Um, we talked about, you know, is there enough competition to make it competitive and therefore efficient? Talk about whether there's externalities, that's really about the qualities of the good itself. Uh, things that are rival risk or not or excludable, that's not a mix of these things, right? Sometimes it's the structure of the market, sometimes it's the nature of the good itself. So, like for example, right, you know, commons goods, uh, if it's just a wild west out there, then yeah, it's a commons good. But if you have some sort of regulation that stops you from just harvesting all the fish, then it turns into more of a private good, right? You can, you can shift things from being one type to another based on policy or based on your market structure. So then goods can switch between one or another thing, depending. I gave the example of fish. Uh, there's also a bunch of things that sort of switch back and forth between being rival or not, depending on how crowded they are, right? So for example, a museum is non-rival if it's not crowded. You walk in a museum, there's like 200 people there, then you being there does not make there be less museum for anybody else, right? But if you walk in and it's like wall-to-wall -wall people, then yeah, you walking in is going to be, it's going to be even more crowded. It's going to be close to cost to everybody else, right? So in that case, the museum might be considered uh, a, uh, a non-rivalrous when it's pretty empty, but rivalrous once it fills up. Same thing with like traffic, right? A road, an open road, is pretty non-rivalrous, right? Uh, it's also non-excludable. You just drive on the road, there's nobody there, you're not imposing costs on anybody, but it starts to get crowded with traffic, it becomes rivalrous. Every additional car slows everybody else down. And if you put a toll on it, then suddenly it becomes excludable. Right? You can shift around what kind of good something is by shifting the circumstances. So, how do we set policy about all this? Right? And we've been talking about how to take these different kinds of goods and turn them into things that work by setting different kinds of policy. And the goal with all of this is trying to get the market to work properly uh, or having some other way of providing it that is not working. Right? We, we talked about you know, if you don't have a market allocation system, you have to have some other way of deciding who gets the stuff. Uh, and in some of these cases, the market allocation system just does not work for these goods. So you have to pick one of those alternatives. Or ideally, if it's not rivalrous, you can just say everybody gets the stuff, no problem, right? So you have to either have uh, some sort of way of getting the market to work, like club good, being a way of making that, those markets more efficient, uh, or have some sort of non-market way of allocating the good, like when the government steps in and you know runs the post office over. Policy is, of course, hard. You have to figure out all the details, details which we will not go into in this class, largely because it's just too hard. But go take a policy course. There's lots of cool stuff to think about.